from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, the topic for this morning is authority. In our gospel lesson, we hear Jesus speaking to an unclean spirit, a demon, and doing so with the authority to cast that demon out of the person. <coughs> we all know about authority. We've all grown up with it. Perhaps your mother said one of the following things to you. I could plant potatoes in those years. <laughs> I'm not your maid. If your friend jumped off a bridge, would you jump with them? Or maybe these phrases are familiar to you. Just wait till you have kids of your own. Answer me, but don't talk with your mouth full. You weren't born in a barn, so stop acting like you were. my all-time favorite. Because I said so, that's why. <laughs> now, I've actually got a whole list of those, <coughs> but I'll save the rest for my mother's day to say. Hmm. Each of those statements that I read to you just now have been passed down from generation to generation. <coughs> I remember thinking as a new parent that I was never going to rely on brute authority. I would persuade my child the inappropriateness of his two-year-old behavior. He would understand and modify that behavior appropriately. And then in my mind's eye, I saw myself morphing into my mother. <laughs> as the words came out of my mouth, almost like I was possessed by a demon. As long as you live under this roof, you will abide by our rules. We've all come running when we heard mom call. In fact, I've seen women in the supermarket call for their child and have a half dozen kids show up, only one of whom is actually their child. <laughs> the Bible teaches us that of all the power in the universe, the concentration of it and the greatest expression of authority and power rests with God. We heard Paul telling the Corinthians that when he dealt with that whole controversy about food that had been offered to idols. You see, some of the converts to Christianity in the Corinthian congregation were former Jews. And they knew that Zeus and Apollo and Hermes were fictional characters. But some of the Christians in the Corinthian congregation were former worshipers of those Greek gods. They believed them to be real. And so when they saw the Jewish Christians shopping in the market and purchasing discount meat, discounted because it had been offered to a god in a Greek temple earlier in the day, they were offended. And so Paul writes to the congregation to remind them, come on, we all know that that stuff is fake. There's only one God. The God from whom all power flows. The God through whom the world was created. The God through whom love has been brought to us. Namely, the Lord our God through his Son, Jesus Christ. And now we have Jesus in our Gospel lesson. He's in Capernaum, one of his favorite places to visit. And as was his custom, he goes to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and there he is presented with a man who has a demon. Now, theologians have debated forever about whether or not demons actually was Jesus kicking out one of Lucifer's angels? Or 
was he curing epilepsy? If he was curing epilepsy, did he know that? Looking forward to finding out someday. But the Bible speaks to us, starting in the book of Isaiah, about the morning star, which may have been a reference to a Babylonian king, or may have been a reference to Lucifer, one of God's angels, who wanted to sit on God's throne, who wanted to have God's authority, who wanted to be on an equal with God. And for that, he and his angels were cast out of heaven. And from that time until the present, Lucifer and his minions have sought to prevent people from engaging in a loving relationship with God. And we can go all the way back to Mama Eve in the garden, where Satan tried to plant doubt in Eve's mind as to the validity of what God had told her. We have Satan tempting Job. Satan in the garden with Jesus tempting him to try and keep him off the path God had laid out for him. We have the first letter of Peter which describes Satan as our adversary, our enemy, prowling about like a wild animal seeking whom he may devour. <coughs> but what about us? If you remember Flip Wilson, a comedian from back in the 60s, he became popular for a phrase that many people have used since then, and probably before then, the devil made me do it. It's funny how when we are raising children, maybe when we were children ourselves, and we got into trouble, one of our standard defenses was, he started it. It's not my fault. my fault. Okay? We seek to blame other people for our behavior. I've told you before, I love it. I, it's so funny. When I go into the office and see one of my students waiting to be interviewed by the assistant principal. What did you do? You're going to fight. You were too smart to do that. Why did you get into a fight? He was mad dogging me. Okay, mad dogging me, in case you don't know, means giving him a dirty look. <laughs> Wait a minute. You got into a fight, and you're going to get suspended because you didn't like the way somebody was looking at you? Why didn't you just turn around? Then you wouldn't be looking at him anymore. Then you wouldn't see what face he's making. And besides, if his mother sees him scowling at you, she'll probably say to him, if you keep your face like that, it'll freeze that way. Another one of those great mama quotes. We all have situations where we make poor choices. Jesus says in John's Gospel that anyone who commits a sin is a slave to sin. We are all powerless to defeat Satan on our own. We are all powerless to heal our wounds or to cope with our weaknesses. In this epiphany season, when we recognize that this man who was in Capernaum was not just a mere man, but the Son of God, then we can realize that he has sufficient juice to make a difference in our lives. If on occasion any of you have ever had a nice thing to say to me as you're leaving the church on Sunday morning, like, good sermon, Pastor. 
You know what my response is? Praise God. It's not me. Knowledge puffs up. You get a fat head. Love builds up. If I'm sharing any message with you on a Sunday morning, it's a message of love. And I'm sharing it with you because God has already shared it with me. Look at Jesus in our text. Even before he cast out the demon, the people are impressed with the authority with which Jesus preaches. This guy knows what he's talking about. Not like our pastor. I love that line. This guy preaches with authority, not like our tribe. In other words, our pastor's a lot of fun, fun. Jesus is speaking words. In fact, within some groups, that's exactly the response. If you hear something really good, and you really agree with it, there are those who will respond, word. Whenever they do that to me, word. I always go, which one? No, word. You can't hurt you. Which word? No, you like what you said. Oh, okay. See, in my community, we just say, I like what you said. Yes, I speak with authority. Yes, I speak with power. Because the word that I preach is not my own. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things came to be through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. He is the light shining in the darkness. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We worship God with our hearts.